Amen. How many of y'all really believe that the Lord will fight your battle? I like that song. But one thing that we have to remember in that song, it says, if I keep still. Because the Bible says that the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord. Man, you please stand all over the building. Man. Father, now, as we come in this hour, we give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor as we glorify you this morning. May your words that we shall read this morning will shine light on your glory and that you will get all the honor. In Jesus' name, we thank you. And the believer shouted, Amen. Amen. All right. If you will open your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, we want to talk to you this morning about when giving thanks is tough. Say that with me. When giving thanks is tough. Man. We hope that the word of God will inspire you today to help you along. You may be seated. As you keep your Bibles open there. Tell someone when giving thanks is tough. When giving thanks is tough. Now tell somebody else when giving thanks is tough. There's a scholar that I like to read a lot of his commentaries, Matthew Henry, who wrote one night as he was robbed. When he got home, he was still trembling with fear. And yet, he regained his calm as he began to pray. And this is the prayer that he offered and wrote in his journal. Father, I thank you first because I was never robbed before. Second, I thank you because although they took my purse, they did not take my life. Third, I thank you because although they took everything I had, it was not very much. And the fourth thing he said, I thank you because it was I who was robbed and not I who robbed. Those are some of the greatest words in a prayer that I've ever heard in the midst of giving God thanks when it's tough. And the Bible tells us in all things, and get this correct because a lot of times people get it so confused and when you're going through something, the last thing, at least the last thing I want to hear is for another Christian to tell me, just thank the Lord. You know, that, that bothers me. It even fuel more fire and angers me because it's difficult when you're going through something to thank the Lord. The first thing coming to your mind in reality is, God, why did this even happen? Most of us would say, Lord, where were you? But here's what the Bible says. In all things, give him thanks. And this was Matthew Henry was doing. In the midst of all that he went through being robbed, he was giving God thanks because it was so much that he could thank the Lord for that he only had a little bit that they took and it wasn't him that was robbing and he's still alive 
So tell somebody when giving thanks is tough. When giving thanks is tough. So one of the greatest marks of spiritual maturity is the ability to give thanks when it's tough. Once you have reached that level of maturity, then you can give thanks even in your toughest hour. And this is what Paul meant in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Notice what he says in verse 16. Rejoice evermore. Y'all see that? And then he says, pray without ceasing in everything. See? In everything, not for everything, but in everything. So whatever you're in, whatever you're going through, whatever you are challenged with, whatever you are suffering with, whatever you are dealing with, he says, in all things, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Tell somebody next to you, in all things, in all things. give him thanks. It is God's will, will concerning you. If you believe that, give God a hand clap. I like to read a lot of different writers and scholars and theologians. I like to read a lot of their commentary and inputs and notes that they enlighten on scripture. G.K. Uh, Chester said, when asked what was the greatest lesson he had ever learned in life, he said the greatest lesson I have learned is to take things with gratitude and not take them for granted. And oftentimes we as believers, it's the small things that we take for granted. In fact, when we wake up in the morning, the first thing you ought to say is, Lord, thank you. It's, it, to us, it's so small, but it's so great because God did not have to allow us to awake this morning. Today is not promised to any of us. At the end of your day, you ought to conclude, Lord, Thank you that I'm still here. May not have everything I need, but I'm still here. May not be feeling my best, but I'm still here. May be broke, but I'm still here. May be suffering, but I'm still here. One more day, one more hour of God's grace and God's mercy is a lifetime of just giving them thanks. Often I say, Lord, if I had tongues of 10,000 men, I can't thank you enough. Oftentimes we need to stop complaining and start thanking God. Amen. See, as long as we're focused, that's a good place to put a hand clap at. Because long as we are focusing on the negative or the problems or the situation, then we have not matured to give God thanks. Because God is in control of everything. He also wrote, you say grace before meals, all right? But I say grace before the concert and the opera and grace before the play and grace before I open a book and grace before sketching, painting, swimming, walking, playing and grace before I dip the pen in the ink throughout the scripture. We hear the call to give thanks. Thanksgiving is faith in action. That means everything we do, before you turn on the computer, give him thanks. Before you begin to write, give him thanks. Before you begin to do anything, it ought to start off with giving him thanks. Why? It's because he's so good. Tell somebody that, because he's so good. And this is what we ought to do. We all have problems. We all go through things. Now most of you all may be fooled by it because you look at people who's always happy and who's always smiling and you say, I wish I can have your life because you seem so happy. God is just blessing you. Tell me what I need to do to be like that. Then walk in faith. Don't focus on the problems, focus on the problem solver. Because trust me, the one that's smiling have problems. You know, we all have problems. Let me see your hands if you have problems and issues. Somebody ought to shout, I'm full of them. But we learn to smile through and why? Because we know we serve the problem solver. Oh, don't play with me this morning. Don't, don't, don't front. Every marriage has its problems. One of my old uh, mentors 
when I worked in, in government, I never forget, you know, I was young, young Christian, saved, and all I thought about Brother Ike was God and, and his sovereignty and his goodness. So every day when I wake up and I go to the job, he would always see me. So finally one day he looked and he said, why you smile so much? You getting ready to die? I said, well, I hope not. I said, but if I do, then there's nothing I can do about it. I said, I smile because I'm happy. I focus on the Lord and not my problems because as long as I'm focusing on him, faith says he's going to take care of the problems because the battle is not what? But who it belongs to. So every battle we go through, every issue we go through, it belongs to God. And see, I just thank God that, you know, God, look, I'm thankful because I'm still here, regardless of how hard it gets. Now, the only way you could say that, if you have been beaten down by life, where you didn't want to live, you don't want to do nothing, then all at once you find this new love, you find this new joy in Christ. You've been hearing people talk about Try them. My grandmother used to always say, baby, try the Lord. Let me see if I can get her accent. You know, baby, look, you just got to try the Lord all by yourself. Not from nobody else's experience, but you have to try him by yourself. You have to get your own, your own. Look at somebody and say your own testimony. And that's what it's all about. So when we look at Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 11, just want to share a few scriptures with you. He says this, the writer says in chapter 8 verses 10 and 11 in the book of Deuteronomy. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. So in everything, you may not have a steak, but for that piece of chicken. Let, we, we was taught, most of you probably haven't been there, especially if you wasn't reared up down south Louisiana, then you don't know. But we was just thankful, Sister Antoine, when mama cooked some chicken feet, rice, and gravy. Sometimes that's all we had. Some of, I see Sister Ram like, but let me tell you something, them chicken feet was the best. Regina shaking her head. See, the, the chicken feet was the best thing, that, especially when you have nothing but ice. In the ice box, you can't make a meal out of that. I have any witnesses in here? Now, how many of y'all done ate chicken feet? Real country folks. I can't believe you, Deacon Shevin. Down Louisiana, you never ate a chicken feet. You've been in the city too long. But we was thankful for that. And sometimes we didn't have bacon. The closest thing we had to bacon was salt joe. And we was, yeah, wife said the same thing, but you know, boy, that salt joe is salty. But when you cook it and fry it in the grease and put it over some rice, see, I'm just showing you all, Deuteronomy says, when you have eaten and are satisfied, you ought to praise the Lord. You ought to thank God because there, there are, why you ought to thank God? Think about the people who don't have food to eat. Think about the people who don't have a table. The next time, mothers, wives, when you complain about your house not clean, thank God for the house. Think about how many people don't have a house to clean that's sleeping under the bridges. The next time, children, when you, when you grumble and complain about your dad or mom being mean, think about the millions of children who parents just gave them up. And I saw the reality of it. I've been down there in the midst of them where they ship them all to a hospital and they have a cart that they walk around and they're giving little three, four, five-year-olds pills to take to calm them down, to put them in a state of mind, to cope with reality that, you know what, my parents don't love me enough. So next time you start to complain, think about how your mother could have aborted you. So we have so much, and I know sometimes it gets tough to give God thanks, but when you think about how good God is, it becomes easy to say, Lord, thank you for another day. 
See, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with, I'm with, I'm with the, the word of God. Is that I don't need anyone to tell me anything to make me happy. See, Paul say I can think myself happy. And if you go back and take Paul and have lunch with Paul and David, then David would tell you, and when all, whenever I think about all the goodness that the Lord has done, my soul, it should be an inward cry out, Lord, thank you. Woke up this morning, don't take it for granted, Lord, you know what? You didn't have to allow me to wake up, but thank you. So this is what we need to be. First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 8. He says, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. This is why I tell Christians everywhere. Quit being shame and afraid to tell somebody what God has done. If God bless you with a promotion, you ought to testify. If God bless you with a new house, a car, a husband, and a wife, you ought to testify to that. That's what the scriptures say. See, a lot of times we shut down because people tell us, you're bragging, you're just showing out. That's where you need to stop them and say, no, I'm not bragging and I'm not showing out. I'm just testifying about the goodness of God. Because after all of you tell me how good God is, there ought to be some signs in your life. But if you're always down, if you're always frowning, if you're always sad, if you're always defeated, and you're always a victim, then there's nothing pretty much you can tell me about how good God is because there's evidence that either God is not good or you haven't been trusting God. Now let me hear the hands if you know God is good. So he said, you got to make known. Let people know how good God bless you. If they take it as you bragging, so be it. You know, it, it, just tell somebody right now, I can't make no excuse for what God has done. Now let me help you out. Just say, woo! Man, I look good. Come on, take a whiff. Woo! I smell good. Now come on, woo! I feel good and it's all because God It's all because God don't take for granted clapping your hands because there are some people who wish they had hands to clap there's people who wish they had legs to walk amen so Psalms 15 and 14 says sacrifice thank offering to God Fulfill your vows to the Most High because God deserves it. You know how many people died between last night and this morning? You know how many people is laying up in ICU? You know how many people was feeling like you are, feeling good today, but the next within seconds or minutes or hours or overnight, they end up in the emergency room and some of them are dead. But you know what? We're still here. But let me stop you before you clap your hands. You, your goodness had nothing to do with it. Your kindness had nothing to do with it. Because the Bible say all of that is but filthy rags in the eyesight of God. But it is his mercy and his grace that have showered us that we're still here. Most of you are like me. We have friends, we have loved ones that have died and went on taking their rest. But tell somebody we're still here. So Psalms 107 and 22 says, let them sacrifice, thank offering, and tell of his works with songs of joy. That's why I tell the singers, when you sing, you ought to sing like you know who you're singing about. If you can't sing like you know about who you're singing about, then you ought not to sing. Because when you do that, it's a disrespect to God. You ought to know who you're singing about. Sing his praises. Because that's just how good God is. That's why I tell you, it's not about how good you can sing. You can keep an A note or a C note. Maybe you're the most greatest singer in the world. But if you're not singing from your heart in the spirit of the God, the great I am, then you know what? It's a waste of your time. I'm just talking about when giving thanks is tough. I'm not going to hold you long because I know you all got a lot of preparation to do. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12, turn there and when you have it, say I have it. Now most of y'all have the ups on me because she already have it. Giving thanks 
unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature for by him we were all were all things created that are in heaven and are in the earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist so if you're wondering where all of this chaos is coming from look back at verse 16 you realize God created everything so he controls everything and then Paul comes back in Romans 8 and 28 and says that for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are the call. So God created dominions and principalities and powers and darkness and evil. So they're not going to consume you. It's just his way of correcting us or getting us to the place of praise or getting us to the place of faith where he wants us to be. Can you clap your hands and tell them that I got it all together? I have it all together. Look at chapter 2 and verse 7. I'm trying not to get excited. I want to stay right here. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as he has been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Everything is about thanksgiving. You know it's a sin when you don't thank God. That's why, let me, let me tell you how powerful thanksgiving is. With all of the chemicals that they are putting in our meats putting on our vegetables and yet we're still alive the Bible says that you need to give God thanks even over your food when you bless it even Jesus took the bread and gave thanks took the cup and gave thanks even your water you let, let, let me let me go back because I worked in public service so let me help you out you may be saying, well, that's a little tedious right there, Bishop, is to give him thanks. Uh, I don't drink the water out of my faucet. I drink bottled water, spring water. Let me tell you something. It ain't real spring water. It comes right out of the hydrant. They just put that there because they know that'll catch your eyes and make you pay all that money for it. All of it have chlorine. If you don't believe me, go right there to the academy or somewhere, a pool store, and buy you a chlorine test kit. And you know what? When you go there and you put that water in the cup, do a little drops in it, and then go to the swimming pool. So you really can go to the swimming pool and drink the same water. Chlorine and fluoride and all that's in your water. They just know how much to put in there. I just educated y'all. Some of y'all didn't even know that, did you? But now, if you want some good, healthy water, I'm going to tell you where you can get it at. Just bring your five-gallon jugs and just go right to that faucet right on the other side of the building. Load up from there. That's spring water. That's straight from underground. No filter, no chemicals, nothing. So most people look and say, oh, I wouldn't drink that. This water that comes into this building is more healthier than the water that's going into your house. That's what you call fresh spring water. Amen? Amen. I know it gets tough sometimes. Listen, watch this. Here's something I want to share with you. There's a woman that had a parrot. And this parrot would just talk, 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 talk. Repeat everything. Just got on the woman's nerve. And she told him his name was Henry. She said, Henry, shut up. And Henry just kept on talking and say, you shut up. She said, if you keep talking, Henry, I'm going to take care of you. And Henry kept on talking. So she took Henry. She said, I warn you, Henry, and I warn you. Now, she took Henry, said, I'm going to cool you off because Henry had enough nerves to say she made him mad. So she threw him in the ice box and closed the door to let him sit in there for a few hours to cool off. So Henry got cold and Henry went to looking around and he noticed the turkey sitting in there. And Henry looked at the turkey and said, man, what did you say? Some of y'all will get that tomorrow. You just got it, baby. Now, you're supposed to got it before anybody. <laughs> Henry thought the turkey was doing a lot of talking and end up in the icebox for to go to the oven. 
So when you give thanks in tough times, Thanksgiving does three things. Number one, it cultivates your character. It cultivates your character. Notice that Paul says the cultivation of gratitude is the will of God. And you need to understand that because thanksgiving is not only the greatest of all virtues, it is the parent of all virtues. Parents recognize this principle when raising children. One of the first virtues that we try to instill in them is the virtue of thanksgiving. And I'm always at the table when my grandkids is over. Some of them reminds us at the first thing they say, oh, you have to say your grace. God is good. God is, what is it? Come on, children, y'all know it. Say it with me. God is good. And I'm sitting there ready to eat saying, thank you, Jesus, for this food and this drink. Amen. You know. But I have to sit there and go through there with them. So parents recognize this. We teach our children to be thankful. And, and, and without it, they grow up to be selfish, manipulative, complaining. And thinking that the world owes them a living. Focus on your haves and not your have-nots. The hymn says that you ought to count your blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. As the psalmist said in Psalms 103 and 2, forget not all his benefits. You know, if you ever take time out to just name your blessing. Just name them. I wonder how many of you can start naming your blessings. Give me one. Everybody shout out one. Let me hear one. Life. Woke up. Health and strength. My grandmother used to say, let me tell you something. If you ain't got but a piece of bread and a glass of water, you ought to thank the Lord. And that's what it's all about. Whatever you have, thank God for it. You know? Now, I, I forgot we got visitors. I do speak fair English. I, I don't talk like that for real, y'all. That, that was my grandmother. You know, when they come down from south, down south, you know, and they talk in English, it's kind of hard to catch it. So, number two, increases your joy. When you give thanks in tough times, not only do it cultivate your character, but it increases your joy. Notice the connection between verses 16 and 18, rejoicing and thanksgiving. It appears again in Colossians chapter one and verse 12, the word thanksgiving and joy come from the same Greek root, charis, which means grace. Thanksgiving in you charis and joy is chara. If you don't give thanks, what will you give? Most people give a lot of complaints. Anger, resentment, doubt, complaint. The secret to abundant joy is the gratitude of, of what? Of the attitude. So it's all about what your attitude does if you're going to give him thanks. Amen? How many of you can lift your voices right now and just say, Lord, thank you? So get this. When you can't change the wind, just adjust your sail. That's all you need to do. Make adjustments in life. If you can't afford Dooney and Burke and all of that, just, I don't know what to tell y'all on that. Do what you have to do. Go to Walmart. If you got old Dooney and Burke and you can't get a new one, then take the one off of there and get you some super glue and, and glue it on there. Y'all know how y'all do it. Don't, 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 don't play. Y'all know some of them handbags ain't real. Tell three people, but it is impressive. So what we have to do, church, here's the third one. Conquer your problems. And I don't mean that all your problems go away when you give thanks. I mean that your problems stop being such a problem. You live from the inside out. What goes on around you no longer controls the condition of the world within you. And I know a lot of people don't want to let it go. It's because if they let go of their complaining and their problems, their life would be boring. 
because they will have nothing else to do. Most of the time people hold on to them because they use it as a sympathy play card to play on people's emotion. And they don't want to let go of the problems and the circumstances. It is what it is. And that's what we have to understand. It's a whole world before us that God wants. Get this in your spirits that God wants us to be happy. Tell your neighbor what I was and what I did back then. I'm not that same person today. And tell them you're not that same person. If you don't believe me, just look at some of us. They had hair. Look at them now. They don't have no more hair. I used to look like him. Look at me now. Now, I can't say I used to look like Brother Darrell because then y'all say, well, y'all around the same age, Pastor, so what's the problem? Why he's and you like this here? You know, I love the way I am, Sister, Sister Shepherd. I love the way I am. See, because I, eat, I probably eat more steaks and chicken and beans and rice than he do. And chitlins and cornbread. So the thing of it is, you adjust yourself and be happy with life. That's what God wants. If, if you're not smiling, I don't care what's going on, you have to smile through it. You have to smile through it. I, I want to help somebody with this, and I'm not going to call them out, but I want to help you because the Lord wants me to let my life be a testimony to you. i never forget when my first two children was taken from me. I begged their mom. I said, let me raise them. She took them and gave them away. One to a godparent and one to her mom. That hurt me so, but guess what? I gave God thanks. Why? I said, you know what? They're still alive. You know what my words were? When they become older, they'll know how to find me. Amen. And God knows one of them ain't forgot. Amen. She may be watching right now, but every time a problem, dad, dad, sometimes, I, I might as well, my wife would tell you, sometimes I look at my phone, so you're going to answer, no, that, I'm not going to call her name. I'm going to spare my baby. I'm not going to call her. I, I'm not going to answer. I already know what she want. You know, how many of your parents get that call? Stanley Jones said, bitterness comes to all, sour sums sweeten others. And I shall use it to sweeten my spirit. And that's what it's all about. You can't control the problems that come into your life. All the events that could be summed up in a phrase, in everything, give thanks. Say that, in everything. Yeah. Shout aloud, in everything. Yeah. In everything. Yeah. Come on, I'm closing now. In everything. Yeah. Give thanks. <clears throat> High five three people and say, I know that's right. But you can't control how to respond. Thanksgiving delivers us from a victim mentality and gives us a victor's mentality. Stop. Let me tell you something. It's nothing cute about being a victim. You need to be a victor. Regardless of what happened, regardless of what they said, regardless of what they did, regardless of what the enemy is doing, you need to be able to say, I'm more than a conqueror. I am a victor. I'm not a victim. Sometimes you have to tell your enemy, if you really want to know what a victim look like, just keep messing with me and you're going to find out. Now, wait, let me explain that because I know some of y'all from the hood and y'all going to take that. Say, say, I got some amens on that one. See, they, they, they can understand that. They're ready to fight. That ain't what I'm talking about. You tell them you'll see in a minute because Jesus said, Woe to him that troubled the least one of mine. It would have been better if they have not been born. That's when you say, you know what? You shouldn't have been born. You, you, you ought to do like Job. You ought to curse the day that you was born. Why? It's because God is getting ready to make you out of a victim. Because I'm a victor. Stand to your feet and shout that I'm a victor. What about cancer? I'm still not a victim, I'm a victor. What about illness? I'm a victor. What about a broken home? I'm a victor. In everything that we do, we are a victor because Jesus has already given us victory. 
If I can use Brother Lot, Brother Lot will tell you. He say, look, I, 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 believe it or not, Bishop, I used to conceive. And he's probably walking more by faith than anyone. Sometimes he gets me. He gets me and he put a smile on my face. He say, well, I guess I'm going to get out there and I'm going to redo my fence. I'm like, huh? <laughs> I say, you going to redo your fence, brother? He said, yeah, I'm going to rerun it. I'm like, saying to myself, how are you going to do that? You know? And then he say, well, I guess I need to, you know, get my tools and work on my truck. I'm like, I say, well, I guess you don't need sight when you just saw it before. You feel for it. He, I mean, he have, a, I love it, but I, he calls me every morning. I look for the call. When he don't call me, I'll be like, where my call at? Sometime, uh, Minister Johnson will call me. He said, you got your call this morning? I said, no, nah, I didn't get mine. You got yours? He said, yeah, I got my call for Brother Lot. Then I start feeling some kind of way. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, he haven't called me. And I'm looking at my watch, and I'm like, okay, I'm waiting on a call. And I just love it. He, Brother Lot, can I tell you what kind of work you do? I tell you, he, he keeps me laughing. He say, he say I, I work at, at, at Ham. I think the name of it is Ham. Nam. I say, well, what you do there? He say, I shred papers. They ain't got to worry about me reading them. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, God will always put somebody in your life to give you that boost of joy. All you have to do is wait on the Lord. I don't care. Look. I don't, before you face any day, you ought to be saying, God, I know you have something. I know you have someone that you're going to send there. So Thanksgiving delivers us from a victim mentality to a victors. Let me see. Let me hear the voices of the victors. And you know what? I once read that nothing can help a person with the wrong mental attitude. And nothing can stop a person with the right mental attitude. And the right mental attitude to overcome your obstacles and win your battles is thanksgiving. Tell somebody it's thanksgiving. That's what it's all about. It's not about the turkey. It's not about the dressing, the ham, and all of that good old stuff. It's about just thanking God for who he is. When life seems like it's rough, when it seems like the storm is coming in, you know what? Don't worry, the Bible says that when the enemy come in as a flood, God has already set up a standard. That means that he cannot touch you, he cannot harm you, he cannot do you no evil. Why? It's because you have been sealed until the day of the redemption. And that's why in all things we ought to give God thanks. I don't care if it's a rainy day, thank you Lord. If it's hot, thank you Lord. If you don't, if you, you might say, wait a minute Bishop, we had some hundred degree temperatures and you mean we ought to thank God for that? I tell you what, go outside and work in the heat of day like Brother Stanley in construction. Then walk back inside in the air condition and you'll find yourself saying, thank you Jesus for all of this good cold air. If you don't, see because God has been that good. Look at somebody and see how God has blessed them. Shake their hands and say, God has really blessed you. Now come on, lift your hands to Jesus and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank him on that moment that you complain. Go ahead and put a thanks right there. Thank him for the moment that you said, why me? Go ahead and put a thanks right there. Come on, clap your hands and tell Jesus, thank you. That I'm still here. See, your business can be prosperous based on your level of mentality of thanksgiving. If you complain about $20, then don't look to God. If God can't trust you to thank him for making $20, then you think God going to bless you to make $200? You got to be thankful for it. When you look in your pockets and you see nothing, you still ought to say, thank you, Lord. I tell people all the time, don't say I'm too broke to pay attention. If you don't know nothing else to say, just say I'm between blessings. I haven't made it to my blessing yet. Notice I didn't say the blessing haven't made it to me. I haven't made it to my blessing yet. <clears throat> the blessing is there. I just need to make it there. How do you make it there? You don't still have no money, but my lights is on, my gas is on, my water is on. I have food in the icebox. 
So I done made it to my blessing. Now I'm showing God that I'm thankful for this God so now my increase can come. Oh, y'all missed that point there. Y'all miss it. Y'all miss Next time you look in your ice box and you see nothing but ice, then you think back to those chicken feet. And, you, and when you go in the store shopping, just go by there and look at them. Because they really taste good when you cut the nails off of them, cut up a little onion, a little green onion, a little bell pepper, a little garlic, and then you put a little water in that little oil and you let them cook down and fry a little bit and get you some rice. Look at some of y'all looking hungry. Y'all, they getting ready. So they getting ready to go and try that. They look like, I need to try that. I just help you out with your ungrateful children. Put them some chicken feet, rice, and gravy there. And don't cook the red beans, give them a can of poking beans. Amen. It's all right. Where Leah at? Aaliyah, where you at, Leah? Come here, Leah. That, that, that's me, my wife, little Mikey there. She the only one out of all the five that will eat right along with us. We have her eating chitlins. I think she tried her chicken feet. Wasn't too favorable. Give me a high five, so I know that's right. I'm teaching them how to live. You ain't got nothing else, grab it. But we thank God for you. Listen, we never like to end any service without, first of all, uh, giving you an opportunity to make your kingdom connection through by saying the doors of the church is open, there may be someone by Christian experience, letter candidate for baptism. Or if you're here and you need prayer, we ask that you come. We believe in prayer. And Brother Damon, we're going to be praying for you and I'm going to be waiting for your email. And I want you all to remember Brother Damon in your prayers. It's a young man, I don't even know where he lived. I have never met him. But he messaged us from our live broadcasting. And I need to work on getting him the message that he required. And he asked that we would pray for him because uh, he have lost faith. But we're going to restore it. And that's why I thank God for you all. Your giving, it allowed us, it allows us to continually be on the air on our Roco TV channel. 